Hi again, I'm Dr. Jason Goodchild with Premier Dental, and joining me today is Dr. Mark Lada. He's the Dean at Creighton University School of Dentistry. And uh, before I jump in, I uh, just have to compliment Dr. Lada on his Zoom background. Um, I'm just sitting here in my little office, but uh, he has really upped his game. And in fact, before we started our conversation today, he educated me how to add uh, wonderful photos as a background. So maybe in the next one, it will look a little bit better than, uh, than this, uh, this dark office beside me. So uh, welcome, Dr. Lada. Thanks, Jason. That's good to be with you. And um, hope you're hanging in there in Philadelphia. Um, as you know, I went to school there and I keep, keep track of Pennsylvania and what's happening in Pennsylvania. So I hope you and your family are well. Yeah, uh, we are doing well. Uh, we're hunkered down, doing everything we're supposed to be doing. Um, the family is uh, still getting along. Our TP supply is, is still holding up uh, and we're doing okay. I hope the same for you and your family, uh, but also as well, the Creighton family. Um, how's everything going with you? Well, per personally, okay. My, my daughter, who, as you know, works in Philadelphia for a nonprofit, Cradles to Crayons, uh, drove here to Omaha a couple of weeks ago because um, she was uh, asked to work from home and environment here is a little bit better. And uh, she'll probably be going back in a week or two when things settle down there a little bit. My family's good. The Creighton family is good, but as all dental schools, uh, all universities actually, we're, we're changing on a daily basis to meet the needs of our students and the, our communities. Uh, and we're having to use technology to do it just like you and I are using now. Yeah. Um, on uh, March the uh, 16th, the CDC and the American Dental Association recommended that dental services be limited to urgent care uh, and elective dental services uh, be terminated or furloughed actually until uh, April 6th. That was extended on April 3rd to April 30th. And so what's happened nationally with all dental schools is that we've really had to change our clinical operations. Mm -hmm. Most schools uh, went to a faculty only covering um, their patients of record with urgent care we used our student volunteers, our senior student volunteers, because here in Nebraska, we had a little bit more latitude. Uh, we don't have a shelter in place and, and still don't, um, where up until this week, our students were providing under faculty supervision that care. The university this week, though, to continue the suppression of the disease, went and really closed the campus to only mission critical people, which essentially said that we have now on-call faculty covering our school. All of our didactic courses are online now, uh, but as you know, Jason, there's a, there's a lot of clinical experience that a Creighton education provides as well as uh, preclinical technique courses. All of those technique courses were suspended uh, on March 16th because the state mandated that no more than groups of 10 could gather in any space. So our underclassmen are still taking their courses that can be given and distributed online. Um, our seniors, however, uh, really are not in the clinic right now, and so we're trying to make adjustments for that. The, our seniors are in a, a dynamic environment where their graduation, their completion of their requirements, and their licensing is, is going to be an interesting challenge moving forward. Yeah, I, I would imagine that uh, you speak to other deans around the country, and um, I guess, I mean, probably everybody's in the same boat on this one uh, as uh, graduating seniors to trying to complete requirements and competencies, and then even looking forward to uh, licensing exams and, uh, and all that good stuff. Uh, the culmination of four years of work and so much effort, and is, it, is everything on hold now, or, or are they making some accommodations or plans? What's going on there? Well, our accrediting body is kind of, has introduced some guidance on temporary changes that, that the schools will be allowed to request as part of their accreditation for the class of 2020. Uh, what that specifically means is gonna to have to be determined by each school. So we have some really significant difficulties though. The Northwest schools, University of Washington, and uh, Oregon Health Science University, um, their clinics are closed until May 15th at Washington, as I understand it, in Oregon until June 15th. So the, our crediting bodies are asking us to assure that we're meeting accreditation standards but giving us some latitude on how we're going to assess our students that they're prepared for graduation. For us, we do so many clinical things. Many of our, our clinical students are doing, you know, before we close, 
were at or really exceeding their clinical requirements. The assessments though, the competency assessments that we would typically do on live patients, we're now gonna do in a simulation environment, either with an OSCE or the mannequin mm -hmm. uh, kind of simulation. And I think many schools around the country are gonna need to take that kind of a, a track to try and graduate their, their, the class of 2020. On the other hand, the students really face some difficult challenges with licensure. Most jurisdictions in the United States on a state-by-state -state basis, the state boards require the students of graduating, but also have, have challenged and successfully challenged a licensing exam, most of which include live patients as part of the assessment. Well, we're not allowed to bring live patients because that's considered non-urgent elective care according to our state mandate. And indeed, most of the licensing agencies have significantly delayed and postponed their uh, scheduling of their tests at dental schools well into June and July. So this really puts the students in a tough spot in terms of their ability. They may have graduated, but can't get a license in jurisdictions. So what we see nationally are two really interesting trends. I don't know if they're going to be sustained after the crisis. The first is some states are allowing temporary licenses so that a student, if he graduates from an accredited school, can get a temporary license for three to six months in a given jurisdiction. And in that period of time, they'll have to then have scheduled and challenged successfully a licensing board exam. The other thing that's happened is, and it's kind of a shame that it took the crisis to move this along. But three major testing agencies have formulated non-live patient assessments to give to states as evidence of suitability for licensure. The uh, Joint Commission on National Dental Exams announced that on June 15th, they're going to publish and deliver through Prometric Centers the Dental Licensure OSCE, the uh, Objective Structured Clinical Exam that they've developed and are offering that to states as one, evident, one vehicle for licensure. That wouldn't be given at the schools anymore. That would be given through these Prometric Centers. Yeah. That'll be effective on June 15th. Of course, the Prometric Centers are closed right now, so we'll see if they open. Uh, the Credits Agency, uh, Central Regional Testing Service, uh, and the ADEX examination, the CDCA group um, at, out east, have announced that they are ready to deliver an all mannequin based exam. Now, part of their testing was uh, the endodontic portion, um, prosthodontic portion of their exam was done on mannequins before, mm -hmm. with live patient examinations done for restorative care and for perio. Both of these agencies now are, are prepared to offer an all mannequin, non live patient based exam. But the difficulty for the students is the licensing bodies have to accept that because many of the practice acts in these states mandates that a live patient exam be done. 